Good morning. Uh, we are waiting for people to come in, so we'll just um, wait a few minutes for everyone else to join us in the room. But very happy to have you all here this morning. I was just telling the panellists this is something I am so passionate about. Sustainability in business is such an important uh, topic to speak around. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to hearing what everybody's got to say on some of the questions that we've got this morning and also the questions that you've got coming in for us. So just wait a couple of minutes just to see who comes in the room and um, yeah, for everyone to, to join us. But I hope you're all having a great morning this morning and the sun's shining with you wherever you are. It's a little bit a little bit mixed actually here in Dumfries. We've got some nice blue sky but there's some grey up there as well so hopefully the sunshine will come out. And yeah, just welcoming everyone if you're still coming into the room. This is our panel on sustainability in business and I'm just going to introduce myself and the panelists to you just in a couple of minutes. I hope you've all got a cup of tea, glass of water, make yourself comfortable. <laughs> I think we've just got to get started actually. So, as I say, I am so happy to be here hosting this panel this morning. Thank you so much for coming on and also thank you to our panelists who have joined us. Um, and my name is Jane Murdoch. I'm a business coach for women's enterprise here at South of Scotland Enterprise, associates are called. I have a background in sustainability and construction. I've been a sustainable business advisor and I've also worked in the environmental sector in a few different roles. Sustainability in business is something that's so dear to my heart. I think it's so important that we continue this conversation on and we keep continuing the conversation because I know it's something that businesses really struggle with. I'm so happy to be at SOCI as well because they are absolutely committed to helping enterprise and communities across the south of Scotland transition to net zero. All of my colleagues have been through carbon literacy training, which is such a huge commitment for an enterprise agency to take on, but we've all done it. Um, and we're looking for sustainable opportunities for business and to look at the benefits to help businesses when they transition. So I know it can be really daunting taking that first step into sustainability. And a lot of businesses are unsure sort of where to start. However, there are, many, there are many, many opportunities and benefits to becoming a sustainable business. So this webinar is a great place to start. So a couple of just housekeeping things for you. We are recording this at the moment, so it will be made available to businesses later on after the webinar is finished. Everyone's on mute to avoid any background noise. And we've asked for questions in advance, so we've got some questions. And we are also taking questions as we go through the webinar. So please just pop them in the chat and I will keep my eye open and ask the panelists any questions. So without further ado, this is really exciting. We've got some fantastic panelists for you this morning. We have got Ian Carstairs from Scottish Enterprise. We have Michael Kuzak from ACS Clothing. And we also have Dr. Marie Martin McKinnon from the Dumfries Slow Fashion Movement Circle Vintage Shop and Gallery. So, Ian, if I could just come across to you first, please, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, Ian Carters, I lead our team of sustainability specialists within Scottish Enterprise. So, my team's part of our business growth directorate. Uh, and essentially, the role of my team is to work with companies to help them improve their environmental performance while gaining a business benefit. So Scottish Enterprise has put the transition to net zero at the heart of everything we do. Um, we've got a net zero framework for action um, that was released last year and it's publicly available on our website. And that sets out how we work with companies to overcome the challenges and harness the opportunities that come from that transition to net zero and low carbon. Um, it also sets out our ambition as an organisation to become a net zero enterprise agency by 2040. So we're practising what we preach as well. But lots of opportunities and I think today's discussion is just going to be fantastic. 
Oh, lovely. Thank you. And you, Michael, can I come on to you and ask you a little bit more about you too? Hi, um, my name's Michael Cusack. I head up Business Transformation and Sustainability ACS. My prime role is to help develop the business. Uh, we are focused solely on sustainability, both from a planet and a people perspective. Uh, my prime directive is to achieve net zero by next year. Uh, we're well in course. I have 12 projects I'm focused in on, uh, but not just on an environmental perspective. We also do a lot of work with people with disabilities, ex-offenders and refugees, which is fueling the growth of our business. Fantastic. That's fantastic, Michael. Thank you. And Marie, if I could come in to you now and just tell us a little bit more about yourself and your business. Yep, um, I'm Marie McKinnon. I have um, a vintage shop in Dumfries selling vintage clothing. Um, and last year, um, myself and my husband set up Dumfries Slow Fashion Movement, the aim of which is to raise awareness of problems surrounding fashion and textile production, fast fashion in particular, um, and to offer alternatives really at local level for people who want to avoid fast fashion and have a different approach to expressing themselves through their clothes. Fantastic, that's great. And what a range do we have here on the panel? That's fantastic. And so we're going to be able to draw from lots of different angles. So our first question that we had uh, come in is, this is to Ian and Marie. And um, if I could come to you first, please, Marie. In a nutshell, why should business owners care about sustainability in the journey to net zero? Well, in a nutshell, um, we're on the verge of an environmental catastrophe um, and it's going to have an impact, negative impact on our lives and also the lives of future generations. That is kind of obvious. Um, but the other thing about sustainable businesses is sustainability shows that you care. You care about people, you care about the planet, the world around you, you care about things beyond just profit. Um, and if you care about those things, You'll also care about customers, customer service, about quality, about value, and all kinds of other things. Yeah, I love that. That's so important. And just to come to you now, Ian, from your perspective, why should business owners care about sustainability and their journey in their field? Yeah, I, I, there are a number of reasons why business owners should, should care about sustainability, a number of drivers to, to push them down that road, but also opportunities they can take advantage of as well. So one of them is that competitive advantage. So we are seeing companies we work with being asked by their customers to demonstrate their sustainability credentials. Um, and if they don't do that, there's the potential of losing out on, on business, either from existing customers or not being able to access new customers. Um, it already uh, sustainability features really highly in public sector procurement just now and we're also seeing the government pushing the enterprise agencies to consider conditionality within the support that we provide to businesses as well so having that and you know, making steps just now um, really has you prepared for for those measures coming in um, another reason that um, improving efficiency so driving down costs um, a lot of sustainability measures can drive down costs within the business um, we're seeing a lot of fluctuation in energy costs just now and some pretty scary figures from businesses we're working with in terms of the increases they're facing. So, you know, if you can look at the sustainability of the business, look at the energy efficiency or efficiency within raw material use, um, you can drive down those costs and kind of cushion yourself against some of those fluctuations. Um, Another reason for, for caring about this is, is managing that business risk, so the risks in the supply chains, we've seen a lot of that through climate impacting on supply chains for, for manufacturing companies not being able to get the materials from their um, their, their suppliers in, in other countries that have been affected by flooding or extreme weather conditions. So really considering what your supply chain looks like and building sustainability into it um, can really help. And then also, um, as we've heard from Marie there, that enhancing your reputation. So if you're putting sustainability at the heart of what you do, it shows there's a, a real value to the business as well. And that can help retain and attract new staff um, who are, are definitely more sustainability conscious now. And I guess 
the other thing that we're seeing more and more is access to investment. So investors are now asking companies to look at um, ESG, so environmental, social and governance elements of the business, so beyond environmental, beyond those carbon reductions, but looking really at how the values of the business uh, really are, are, are manifested and they're basing their investment decisions on that. Um, and I think that the last reason is because it just makes sense. Um, you know, it, it, there's, there's opportunities for, for new business development, there's opportunities to access new markets, the efficiencies all coming together. And if you don't do it now, you're going to be left behind. Absolutely. And I completely agree with that. And I love the fact that you're talking about opportunities because I think a lot of businesses do find it quite daunting. And to think that, to flip it in its head and think about it as the opportunities and the benefits that business can have, it just takes away that sort of overwhelming element. Uh, which is really important, so thank you for that. Um, so my next question, this is from Marie and Michael, I'd like to put you, Michael, first. So both of your businesses are focused on providing sustain sustainable services to your customers. Can you tell us why you think that's important? And that's to Michael. I'm sorry, Michael, I'm maybe just not hearing you there. I'm sorry, sometimes it's no, better when I'm on you. You can either be a victor or a victim to sustainability. I, I wouldn't be here today if we didn't focus on sustainability. When the pandemic came in, nobody was paying us and everybody wanted paid. But because we focus on sustainability, our you know, creditors listen to us more. And in fact, one of our major creditors became a major investor. And I can I can say to you right now, they're looking to realise that investment and they're looking at a huge return on that. We've got queues of ethical investors wanting to talk to us about getting involving themselves in our journey. We attract funding from, uh, from EANS organisation because we're credible, we're doing the right thing. Uh, they see us as an exemplar in the industry. We've got access to soft loans that other organisations can't get. The thing about it is, it's fueling our organisation. And when I talk about being a victim, if you're going to sit back and watch what's going on in terms of sustainability, you will not last. Remember the dot-com revolution. Remember what happened then and some of the organisations that are not around now. There's a fantastic opportunity out there in sustainability by branding and aligning yourself to sustainability, it will propel you forward. I can sit here right now and tell you, we're looking at a tenfold growth, a very conservative tenfold growth. I would, my CFO won't be happy with me saying this, but I would say you can add another two zeros onto our turnover over the next five years. It is huge, and it's all about sustainability. It's the biggest opportunity that is hitting a, our country right now. And the thing about it is propelling it is the fact that if we don't do it, it can close you down. If you can't meet the new legislation coming up, if you look at that legislation and react to it, you're going to fall behind. Uh, and what we're doing is staying ahead of it. Now, we're only an SME, but uh, uh, we will be a large enterprise uh, relatively quickly. We're currently, we went from 40 people at the start of lockdown to 180 now, and we're still growing. Uh, so, I mean, we're forecasting this time next year will be a large enterprise. Uh, all this growth is coming from sustainability, all the different aspects of it. But it's also a great way to reduce costs. And I know there's other questions coming up, up that I can bring out some of that. But just one example, the first step we took was to reduce uh, uh, not reduce, sorry, eliminate all waste going to landfill. That saved us 70% of our costs. Think about it. We stopped wow. putting waste to a landfill and saved 70% of our costs. Look at carbon emissions the way that you look at other costs in the business, and it will transform your business. Fantastic. I'll stop there great. before I go on. No, you're grand, and that's, that's fantastic. I mean, 70%, that's wow. 
absolutely amazing. And that the, these are the stories that are so important because they're so inspiring to other businesses as well. And you can see that like that that's such growth throughout like a pandemic. It's almost unreal. So and due to state sustainability, that's absolutely amazing, Michael. Thank you for that. Um, Marie, yeah, same question to you. Can you tell us why you think it's important to you uh, to pro provide sustainable services to your customers? Um, yeah, well, for us, really, in the first instance, when we started the business, when we started the vintage clothes business, it was because we wanted to have an ethical business right from the beginning. Um, and it was an ideological position, really, for us. Um, we wanted to work in a sector that, that didn't have a hugely negative impact on the environment and on the people who work to produce goods. Um, and we know that the fashion industry, fast fashion in particular, does uh, have a negative impact on both people and the environment. But really, as consumers ourselves, we were already moving towards buying from businesses that were sustainable and that had a low impact and low negative impact on the environment and and people um, and since starting the vintage business we found that more and more people are looking for sustainable ways to shop more and more people are seeing especially young people that they're they're interested in how their clothes are produced and the thing beyond the environment actually the, the biggest thing that young people say that that they care about is the human impact of fast fashion and, and high volume production and the, the negative ways that that impacts on people's lifestyles and workers rights etc that's what young people are caring about um, the mindset of customers is changing and sustainable businesses are growing because customers want to shop sustainably and as well i think that social media um especially amongst the younger consumer social media is is providing a kind of platform for sustainable businesses to have transparency to show people what they do and why they do it and it is a question of sort of building trust with the consumer um you know that people are becoming more mindful about how they shop um, and really it's it's a win-win because from our perspective we get to fulfill our ideological aims um, but also we're building the business because people are coming round to the idea that they want to have more sustainable lower impact ways of fulfilling their daily needs as a shopper yeah that's fantastic and it's so lovely to hear that young people are really focusing in on these these issues about sustainability and thinking about the environment and also about the impact on other people that's really it's really encouraging to hear that and i suppose it's it's not really surprising because we've got so much information out there now that um, everybody's exposed to what's actually happening and the benefits from having sustainability so thank you so much for that. Um, our next question is for all three of you. Um, and this is a question around how can sustainability impact the bottom line for business owners? And Ian, can I come to you first on this one? Sure. Um, I, I guess well, we've heard a little bit about it before, but there's a number of ways that can, can impact on the bottom line. I guess the, the first one, and Michael really touched on it, is about the lowering the cost. So if you're calculating your carbon, you're reducing your carbon emissions, you're reducing your energy costs and reducing the amount of raw material you use and the waste of landfill, a direct impact on the bottom line. Big savings there. Um, the next one uh, is a bit a bit more out there, but it's more about an engaged workforce. So if you've got a, a company who puts sustainability at the heart of their, their business, and they'll often um, allow their, their staff to come along as part of that journey to the shared vision. So um, they might address social and environmental issues as part of their core values. And that translates to a kind of a working culture where people are involved, it makes them happier in their job, and it makes them more productive as a result of it. So um, yeah, I think that that's another one. Um, and then the other pieces around that, that opportunity. So if you're kind of innovating your product or your service, to make it more sustainable, doing it differently, rethinking what you do, um, introducing circularity maybe in, into it, then there are opportunities there. 
either for cost savings or for for new products to be launched so um, again that that direct impact on bottom line absolutely and um like the, that's the thing there is no negatives there these are all positives looking at the lowering cost cultural side of sustainability and also innovation which is amazing and michael any other further thoughts on that uh, well i'll just do the quick points about uh, well you will attract additional funding uh, through it you will reduce your costs which i've rightly said I, the additional funding, I've mentioned grants, soft loans, a, a, a investors, ethical investors who will be in with you for the long term. The other thing as well, when I talk about reducing costs, let me just give you a quick example. I'm working on a project right now in fresh water. If I was to tell you that one of the UK's biggest laundry facilities could be a net provider of water, you'd probably scratch your head and think that uh, maybe my green tea was a wee bit too strong but the thing about it is we are actually collecting the water from a roof rainwater harvesting so we don't need to bring in fresh water through you know scottish water we're also reusing our water and how we're doing that is that we did some research on it and what we've been able to identify in that research is that the final rinses can be used in the first rinses to take out uh they, they they take out the duct so that can be reused on top of that we're using ozone gas in the washing cycle which reduces the temperature of the water and also reduces the amount of chemicals that we require because we're sanitizing the garments not using chemicals but using a natural occurring sub substance on top of that my latest project is that i'm actually now uh, being able to treat the water on site so be no water leaving the facility to go into the mains. So we will have a sucker water facility. And you're talking about, all right, it's an investment, tens of thousands to do all that. And we've been able to do it. We're going to get a huge, it's going to save money and it's going to help the environment. And it sends a big message. It attracts a lot of business. The more that you embrace sustainability, you attract things like the green pound, the pink pound, the purple pound, and it makes a big difference. It also opens up other markets. You're seen as an innovator, and people want to collaborate with you, and that opens up other opportunities as well. It's just huge, and I can't understand why more people are not doing it. We were only a small SME. We're all, most of the people on this call will be small. They'll be SMEs. We were tiny, and we're growing. And it's all because of sustainability. Fantastic. That, I love that, Michael. And I love your passion. It's fantastic. And it's so important to like highlight that point on and give an example of innovation because everything you're talking about there is about innovation and, and different working practices because we're considered in the environment and we're considered in sustainability. And it does, it just brings a whole new way of looking at work and how we work with the environment. And what are such a, 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 an important one, one of our resources that we, we have to look after it. So that's amazing, thank you. And Marie, same question to you, please. Uh, how can sustainability impact the bottom line for business owners? Um, well, I, I mean, I think Michael's covered um, much of it there. Cost cutting um, is is a big one. Obviously, the best way to help towards sustainability is to use things that you already have. So Michael was talking there about reusing water, and we are talking about you know keeping clothes in circulation for longer. Um, it's all it's all about not generating as much. Um, emissions probably from um, production um, and about trying to cut waste. Um, for us, and I can only really talk about the clothing industry, but um, the amount of waste that's generated on an annual basis in the clothing industry would make your eyes water. Um, so that's the reason why we wanted to set up Dumfries Slow Fashion Movement, A, to raise awareness, but also to actually do something practical to try to keep the clothes that we have in circulation. We've been doing that with our vintage business, but we want to go further. So we set the kick up um, to do that um, 
And I mean, yes, cost cutting, you're keeping things in circulation longer, you're buying things, you're investing in things that can be reused. So you don't constantly have to buy things all the time. You're reusing things that you've already got. You're recycling things. So you're not having to buy new. These things are already in circulation. Um, a lot of it is to do with, I think, what Ian mentioned, which is about driving new customers. So the more customers you, you drive into your business, the more profit ultimately that you're going to make is going to make your business sustainable for the future, not just from an environmental perspective, but from a business perspective. You are, are driving more profit into your business um, by working in this way because people are latching on to the idea that they would, if they had a choice between a sustainably uh, sourced item um, or a non-sustainably sourced item, they would go for the sustainable, especially if the price bracket was around about the same. And in fact, people are prepared to pay a little more to have the kind of value associated with sustainability attached to um, the items that they're buying. Absolutely, and uh, that's a, such a great point to make as well. It brings in other customers, and also people are willing to, and I'm one of those people, I will pay extra for something that I know where it's came from, that it's a sustainable product, and that I'm also buying from a business that is sustainable. And I know there's lots of people out there that are like that. So yeah, you're definitely bringing in more customers, different types of customers, and creating a, a loyalty amongst your customers as well. As well as thinking yourself, Marie, about um, reusing what's already existing and what's already there. It's that innovation again and thinking about how do we use things that are around us to for our own business and um, how, how can we, we create this uh, circular economy where things are, are just reused. So moving on to our next question and thinking about Sorry. moving into the sustainability. Jane, can I, Jane, can I interrupt you? I've just got a question in, which is probably a good point to tackle. There. I've got a question in from someone who's a, a wood sculptor and he says he uses trees and he also you know from from that we're going to go to landfill or be burnt in log fires etc he also uses a battery generator and he's got solar panels in his workshop but he's um wondering if there's anything else you know that that may have been overlooked that would help him become more sustainably conscious thank you that thanks so much for that question is there anybody that would like to answer that I mean, what I would, I mean, there's a lot of models out there that we use. Uh, I, 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 they're for business, uh, large businesses, but we use things like so the El MacArthur Circulatics tool. Uh, we use, you know, things like so we've got an organization that comes in called Climate Partner who calculates our carbon emissions. Uh, we work with, on a people front to look at ways we can be more sustainable. We do things like so with a disability confident leader. Uh, there's things that you can do, like so the, the real living wage, uh, real living hours, we do both those. Uh, there's the Scottish Business Pledge that Ian's organisation champions. Uh, we use these models. And another one, actually, that we use is we are, you, if you go in for awards, it's a great way of benchmarking. So things like the Vibes Award, believe it or not, I use that model to redesign our, all our business towards more sustainability. It was fantastic. We had fantastic criteria. It sort of simplified in the last few years, but going back when we won it, it was absolutely incredible. And it had they we basically said, if we were to win this, what would we need to do? And we worked our way back. So what I would say is use some of these business models out there, calculate what your emissions are, they'll highlight the hotspots in your operation. I, and what you're able to then do is reduce them. So that's what I would say, use the models. Thank you, Michael. Any, Ian or Marie, would either of you like to speak to that as well? I think that's an exemplar answer, Michael. Obviously, you know you've you've lived it as well, um, and and you know that that journey. But I think you're right. You've got to understand what you're doing first before you can change it. I think um, the, um, the 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 person who's posed that question's obviously got a, a consciousness about you know what they're doing. So it's about delving deeper into that, understanding where you are on your journey, and then setting out a plan to improve it. Um, there might be some specifics, and I know there's a question later on around the support mechanisms that we maybe pick up on things there that, that we can access, but it might not be the time to get into it quite yet. Fantastic. Emily, would you like to add anything? 
Um, no, I mean, I, th I think Michael's given a, a, a great answer. There, there is actually lots of support out there where people can conduct what you might call a sustainability survey, um, you know, where they can look at their business um, and can get help from various different organisations. Um, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation is is a, is a really great, great place to start. Um, and I think that, you know, it, it's just really nice to hear people thinking about you know how how they can do this how they can further develop their sustainability options um and still run their business as a, as a profitable enterprise absolutely that, that's it and um, we've actually got a question michael it was to you um what was the name of the analytical tool that you mentioned there uh, well there's a few circlytics and it's ellen MacArthur foundation and that tool helps you to prove that you're a circular operation. Uh, there is also a lot of companies out there that help you calculate your carbon emissions uh, because it's not as simple as you think, uh, yeah. like a lot of these things, and you do need a lot of support. Again, just backing up what Marie said, there is huge amount of support there, including Scottish Enterprise, so Ian's team, Zero Waste Scotland, for example, Business Gateway, there are huge amounts of support. Uh, but uh, one of the things I would just say on the tree side, plant additional trees as well would help. Uh, look at the, the, the soil structure, uh, the other thing, use of water, any chemicals used in the business. These sort of things are ways to look at. And if you're employing people, look at it from you know people more disadvantaged in the community and bringing them in. They're just some quick things that I would add. Great answer. Thanks, Michael. And I'm also, this next question is for you again, Michael. So it's, uh, it's thinking about, so ATS clothing have been on quite a journey when it comes to sustainability. Is this a long-term priority for the business? It's, it's, it's the, the very core of what we do. I wouldn't even call it a priority or a long-term priority or anything. It's what we are sustainability in the fashion industry. We want to be the leading player in the circular fashion economy. We consider ourselves the infrastructure for that, providing support to all these emerging businesses. I, what we do is, you know, we basically, we are involved in the rental, the resale. We're now involved in things like so the end of life of textiles, which is going to be huge. Uh, so, you know, the thing about it is, we wouldn't exist if we didn't embrace sustainability. And the very future of our business is tied in with sustainability. And thank God it is for the planet's sake. Because, I mean, as Marie rightly says, I don't think people realise the damage, the, the choices that they make in their clothes do to the environment and the damage it does to people throughout the world. And before they start thinking that something that happens in the third world, just have a wee look at what happens in Leicester in the fashion industry where companies, where people's health are put at risk, where they're paid less than the minimum wage. It's criminal what's going on in the fashion industry, and people need to start waking it up and start focusing on what's right and their relationship with clothes, because there's so many marvellous sustainable solutions. So all of us, this shirt I'm wearing is over 10 years old, about a third of my age. Fantastic. And that, that's a great point as well. It's like when we're buying, it's it's thinking buy something that's got to last and it's got to, that's from natural materials and 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 it's got to last your lighting that it's got to have real longevity. We've had another question come in from um from our audience uh asking oh, is that we've got a couple coming in. The first one was about the carbon calculator. I know that we we are actually at Soski we're, we're in talks at the moment about a new carbon calculator that's coming out. I'm not completely sure that I can speak about it yet, but there is one coming shortly. So it's something that if you're in our region across the south of Scotland, get in touch with us because we've got to be uh, rolling it out to all of our businesses to use, and it's a free tool to use. Um, but what was the the tool that you said you'd use, Michael, was a climate partner was for the circulate to the Ellen McCarthy Foundation. What was the other one? It, it's actually climate partner. That uh, climate. And the reason it's not just the tool; it's the fact that we're third party accredited. So if you were to, I mean, it's easy for me to go in and uh, adjust the tool to make me net zero, but 
what you need to be at the end of the day, like a lot of these things, you want experts to come in and accredit you, and that's what we pay the extra money for. Uh, and we work in partnership with them, and they help us in the journey. It's not just the fact that they accredit us. They also give us some tips. They point us in the right direction, and they keep in touch with legislation. I'm no expert uh, in terms of a lot of these international standards. They keep us right in that. But it is quite confusing. Yeah, and things are changing as well. And sorry, I did get that slightly wrong, that question. It was someone asking if anyone in the panel could recommend a company to calculate carbon carbon emissions. The, 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 the tools now, although I must say, the tools now are fantastic. They're very easy to use. Um, and I would certainly recommend whoever it was that asked that question to go out and have a wee look, because the tools are just becoming easier and easier to use, and they're, they're fantastic. But does anyone know of any companies that they would recommend for calculating emissions? Climate Partner. That's great. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, we have another question coming in. This is great. Uh, are there any organisations that provide mentoring to businesses focusing on sustainability? I think that's quite important as well, because I think if somebody's in the same industry as you, if they're a little bit further on in their journey, eh, to be having that mentoring from another business can be invaluable. So does any, does any of your panellists want to speak on that? Not, not in terms of a specific provider, but I absolutely agree that that's really important. So um, there are a number of companies out there who will come in and do your carbon footprint for you. Um, but there are others that will do that guided learning to help you understand what it really means, what your impacts are, what you can do to change them, identify those hotspots, as, as Michael mentioned, and then provide you with that, that plan to go forward and empower you and the people within your business to do it. And that's a, a much better way of doing it than, than having a consultant come in and do a report for you. Absolutely. Uh, so. I totally agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the understanding is where the passion comes from. It, like with with all of you, that that understanding of why it's important, then you really get behind it, and it becomes a cultural thing within your business. It becomes, as you say, Michael, who you are. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, the next question that I wanted to ask, because we get a lot of feedback from businesses asking where do they start, and I think there's a lot of businesses that get really stuck on goodness, I don't know what the first step should be. Um, from my perspective, and I would just like to ask each of you what, what, if you can give like a little tip, but certainly from my perspective, I would say get a baseline on where you're at. Where are you right now? So that you, you know where you can go and how you can build on that, that step by step. Um, but Ian, do you have any other thoughts on that, where a business could start? Um, so you're absolutely right. Benchmark, understand where you are on your journey. Um, if you don't, know where you are, then you can't improve on it. Um, but I think it's really important to build commitment. Um, so at the top level within the business, uh, if you don't have that commitment at, at management and leadership level, it's difficult to really drive it forward. Um, I think, you know, if, if you can get sustainability included in the, the kind of the, the either board or management team meeting agendas regularly, have it something that's in the consciousness and spoken about an awful lot, then it makes it much easier to, to drive down. And then once you've You've got the, the commitment. Once you've got your benchmark, you just need to come to a plan. So set some some targets. Um, you know, get some KPIs in there, um, and report on your 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 improvements regularly. So it can't be against a plan that sits there and you know I'm going to be net zero by 2045, and then yeah. I'll think about that again in 2040. Um, but so there's a big bit about communication in there as well. So once you've committed, tell people about it because it it, it means that you've then got to uh, you, you've got to deliver on it. Um, yeah. And then the last thing is getting the staff involved. So once once it's there, yeah, yeah you've got leadership. But you need everyone else to drive it. It's not just the responsibility of the green team or the the health and safety and environment manager. It's got to be everyone that that's that's driving this within the business to make it successful. Yeah, fantastic. That's that's great answer. And Michael and Marie, is there anything you can add to that? Um, I, I think we would would quite like to see. Um, these things written into 
um, the health and safety plans um, and or maybe just actually to run alongside as a separate thing a, a risk assessment for um, sustainability really um, and I think if if you do that then you know where the gaps are and you know where to where to start looking in order to 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 tighten up your your policies on this um, and also then it filters down through into all of the staff that work for your business um, mm -hmm. as well with everybody keeping an eye on exactly what's happening just in the same way that they do with with health and safety so there are specific policies that people have to stick to and they understand why they have to stick to them um, and and this can help uh, businesses, I think, to to see where they need to make improvements, um, and and then to seek help from all of the various organisations that we've mentioned, to to try to fill that gap um, in their sustainability working practices. Oh, that is fantastic. You know, thank you, Marie. And Michael, do you have anything else? Just to add on, I mean, with us, our first step was quite simple: was the elimination of of waste going to landfill, which initially was all about reducing the cost of waste. Uh, but what I would say to you, as I would add to what the others have said, it was actually uh, one of Ian's colleagues that accompanied us on that journey, Ken Maxwell. And uh, Ken's basically the godfather of our sustainability. Uh, and it was him that launched us on the path. So collaborate on that first step as well. And it's amazing what you can achieve. Yes, absolutely. No, that's that's fantastic. Okay, we've got another comment here and a question here in the comments. Uh, someone needs funding in their business. They've just nearly started. Um, I, I take it that's funding for sustainability. Um, they've applied to transmit, but didn't get any help there. Can anybody point them? And it depends where you, whereabouts are you? Where are you based? But can anyone, Ian? Can you possibly speak to that or anyone else on the panel? And we'll just wait for them coming back to tell us where we are as well. Yeah, I mean, there's there's, there's lots of pots of funding out there. Net zero, low carbon is um, very a uh, hot topic, if you pardon the pun, just now. Um, they're, so de depending on what they're looking to do, where they're based, it, it, it really depends. Uh, and, and also on the, um, the I guess, not the, 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 the quality of the project. So um, if it's an incremental change, there's less likely to be funding there, or there might be a different mechanism. It could be loan funding rather than grant funding. So quite quite a specific one. Um, again, when we get into the, the, the kind of the, the funding and support element, there, there's there's lots out there. And, you know, Michael's mentioned Zero Waste Scotland. Um, you've got uh, Business Energy Scotland who have just taken over some of that industry loan funding element from Zero Waste Scotland and some of the, um, free consultancy support for businesses. Um, you've got various low carbon manufacturing calls that are due to be launched. We've got green jobs calls. So there's, there's lots of pots of money out there. Um, fully appreciate that it can be quite difficult to navigate that funding landscape. And that's where um, some of the support from, from my team and from the, the, the gateways and from uh, you know, colleagues in, in SOCI as well have, have a framework for support. So it, it's it's really a matter of kind of finding that first touch point um, and, and having a conversation with someone and, and, and letting them guide you to where the most appropriate support is. Okay, that's fantastic, thank you. Um, yeah, there, are, and there really is lots of support out there and I think it's, it, it really is sort of getting in with one of the, the support agencies who can sign post you, because it, it is quite a, it, it's quite a broad range of support that's out there. So I would definitely say get in touch with like your business gateways, Scottish Enterprise, SOCI, or uh, someone else locally if you're like Highlands and Highlands or whatever. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Uh, this is one for Marie. I'd like to ask you, why were you interested in starting a business that focused on sustainability? Well, I think actually coming from exactly the same perspective um as as michael mentioned it it's a core of what we do um we didn't really set out to to have a kind of a business that was focused on sustainability as such we wanted a business that was about fashion um but the problems that we saw 
um, in the fashion industry meant that we didn't just want to set up a manufacturing uh, outlet that, that made clothes from scratch out of any material that you could buy anywhere. We wanted it to be more thoughtful. We wanted it to be very much located within the circular economy. Um, and, you know, we wanted it to be something that was absolutely low impact all the way across the board um, so it's a difficult question because yes we're focused on sustainability but it wasn't really so much a conscious decision as, as it was built into the reasons why we wanted to start the business um, you know so I don't know if that answers the question it but does, there no. it is <laughs> No, it does, and it, to me, it sounds as though it, it, the, the, your business is always um, based and grounded in sustainability. That is part of all of it. Absolutely, um, and the other thing was we, we wanted a business that that was about the community as well. So, um, we set up the kick um, because we, we wanted to involve the community in our business. We wanted to um, spread skills about um, uh, throughout the community um, and we wanted people to understand why we decided to set this business up with Dumfries Slow Fashion, um, mm -hmm. that it wasn't just about about driving profit, that, that profit driving and ethical ways of working um, and sustainable planetary ways of working and, and ways of supporting people were absolutely built into the business. And I think this is I think coming back to, to what, what Michael said about his own business, this is the core of the future, in our view, for the way that businesses operate. And I think that consumers are, are becoming much more conscious and and really they're gonna they're going to um start impacting on our businesses by not buying from us if we don't actually have this built in to the way that we operate and I think it's quite important to realise that yeah we're at a kind of turning point at the moment where we're starting to talk a lot more um, about sustainability but in the not too distant future I can see that, that this will be something that we'll be talking about why people are not sustainable actually rather than why people are. Absolutely, absolutely agree um, and so that kind of brings us on to this other question that we've, we've just been asked. So thank you for, for that, Marie. Um, and I do think it's it's very much about collaboration and thinking about communities. And we are coming back to that in business. It's it's almost as though we, we've got more of that community feeling where we have that uh, more community outlook on businesses and how we can work together as a community and collaborate. So one of the questions that we've been asked is, perhaps for Michael or Marie, can you recommend good resources for material sourcing and ways to evaluate your material choices? Because there's a lot of greenwashing out there. And when you look carefully, things maybe aren't as sustainable as they say. Now, this is a minefield, isn't it? So Michael, how would you answer that? Well, to be honest with you, I don't have all the answers. I don't even try to have all the answers. It's all through collaboration, working with other people, academic institutes, professional bodies like the Scottish Enterprise, uh, Zero Waste Scotland. Uh, it's about reaching out and understanding. It is a minefield, uh, and it's a big investment. I mean, right now, we use quite a lot of polyurethane. I'm currently looking at, I, by talking to another company, it was very interesting. Uh, PJ Paper, who again a Scottish-based international organisation, they told me about a company that produces the plastic for dishwasher tablets, and it dissolves in water but protects the actual capsule. I can actually, I'm now in discussion with them to this company with a view to them making the polyurethane shrouds that protect the garments. So at the end of life, I just dissolve them in water. I so. That came from purely collaborating on other issues uh, and looking at it uh, from a different perspective. Things like packaging and all that. I don't have the resources to monitor what's happening globally with the use of cardboard. But there are many researchers in academia that are looking at that right now. So using things like knowledge transfer partnerships, sponsoring PhD students, bringing in master students. Here's one for you. The 12 projects that I'm running to hit net zero. I have 12 master students while we're, we're working with Strathclyde University right now 
bringing in 12 master students who will start in the next month and work with me for four months on these projects. Now, I'm not going to say they're going to deliver it all, but they will create huge momentum. The other thing as well, we're picking up their expenses and, and giving them free lunches. That's the only cost that we've got from that. So, you know, the bottom line is they're doing it's part of their studies and they're going to deliver that. Again, collaboration, that research, I don't have it, but there's a lot of expertise out there. And it's about just thinking out of the box and working with as many organisations, getting your company out there and things that you, are your hotspots. I was being polyurethane, cardboard, that sort of thing, and hangers as well. Yeah, no, I love that, and it's great. And it, 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 there's a lot of things that are being repeated through this discussion, and collaboration is absolutely one of them. Collaboration, innovation, and new ways of working. And uh, the key thing that I was getting at, what you were saying there, Michael, is the research that's already being done and, and really tapping into that so that we can understand uh, what's being done because things are moving very, very quickly. Marie, is there anything else you would like to add to that? No, I, I absolutely, absolutely agree that um, obviously not a single one of us knows everything, can never know everything. <laughs> things are constantly changing. We're finding out new things. Technological developments um, are happening all the time. I absolutely agree. It's about knowledge sharing um, and where you don't know, you go to somebody who might know. Um, and I also I also think it's important to, to say that it's a it's a journey. You know, it's it's about moving towards sustainable practice. Um, every small step that we take counts, um, and and to not, you know, yes, we want to be ambitious, but but we can't just switch on um, something that's yet yeah, today we're sustainable and um, and we've moved towards net zero and, and we just did it overnight. It's a process, um, and and the the sheer fact that we're actually having this conversation here is moving towards helping and building solutions to go forward into the future. Absolutely. I love that point, Marie. It's a journey and every small step counts. That is absolutely key, I think, to, to the, the sustainability process and journey, as you see. I love that. Thank you. Um, so this is moving on now to a question for Ian. Thinking about sustainability in business, do you think this is an issue that is likely to go away in the future? Um, there's a pretty short answer to that one. Um, yeah, no, no, there's no chance. Basically, um, I think the the need to address sustainability is just going to intensify for businesses. Um, so I, I've been involved um, in sustainable advice to businesses for about 15 years, and in that time, I've seen it go from a, a nice to do, like something people put a green team around, and it's kind of that that add on feel good stuff, to being a real business imperative. So we're seeing the businesses that commit to sustainability and net zero using that as a key differentiator to, to win new business and re retain existing customers. We had one example of a, a seafood company who actually were doing a lot of good stuff, but just weren't shouting about it. They weren't, didn't really understand what they were doing. They, 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 um, but they, they, they had to uh, retender for a contract. And, and as part of that, their customer was asking them to, to, to show their environmental credentials. They didn't know how to do it. Um, so we, we, we went in, worked with them, developed a plan, kind of captured all the, the information and uh, and actually helped them retain a five million pound contract that without doing this they wouldn't have they wouldn't have retained. Wow. Um, the, the other thing we're seeing is more and more legislation and regulations around this, particularly for large companies just now, but we're starting to see that trickle down where they're expecting the SMEs that supply into them to also share those values and, and show them as part of their reporting. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not going away. Yeah, no, fantastic, and it, it, it really is, and that's a really interesting point as well, because it's something that I've found over the years that sometimes not only do businesses not shout about what they're doing, sometimes they 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 don't shout about it because they're not confident. They're not confident in the products that they're buying in. They're not confident in what they are doing. So again, it comes back to the research and the understanding of what the services and products are that you're offering and having a, an absolute understanding and belief in what you do. Marketing is really, really important. Um, so this is to all our panelists. What would you say are the short and the long term benefits for business owners that decide to become more sustainable? So Marie and Ian, to ask 
uh, to speak to business experience in more in ger general terms, uh, what have you witnessed by working with a variety of business, businesses and how come you foresee it? Yeah, I think if we look at the, the short term, we've kind of touched upon those. It's the kind of, it's the cost savings, it's that resilience, it's the staff recruitment and retention and the positive PR opportunities, you know, if you're doing stuff. So again, the, the importance of communicating it and sharing it. And and, and that's one thing that the ACS, ACS does particularly well. There's a willingness to share um, uh -huh. and that then leads to the, the, the goodwill for the collaboration as well. Um, long term, you're looking more at that resilience to climate related impacts. So on on both premises and supply chains, um, so you know take action now that kind of long term benefit, um, the access to new markets and, and new customers. So embracing sustainable business practices, it, it can come at a cost. It might require some investment, but it can really reap those benefits uh, down the line. Um, and it's a way of embedding that values based culture within a business as well. So that takes time to to kind of evolve. Um, but it is definitely a benefit that, that can have a more engaged and a more productive workforce. That would be the, the, the general views I've seen. Absolutely. And for yourself, Marie, what, what would you say the, the long and the short term benefits are? I mean, I, th I think Ian's covered um, the majority um, there. Um, running costs obviously coming down, less waste. We've talked about in theory, green investment um, as well for your your business, customers coming to you, bringing in new talent to your business, um, finding new and innovative ways of, of working. But I think safeguarding people and the environment is, is something that the consumer cares about. So as a business, being sustainable now is an investment in your future and that people are starting to expect businesses to to be sustainable but also transparent in their um in their activities greenwashing is a, an absolute pr disaster um yeah. so it is actually about being truthful about what you do and i think as well you know that you need to admit where you're where you you could do better and that's fine um and and i think that that it is a, it's about value and about showing people, coming back to what I said in the beginning, showing people that you care about yourself, your business, um, the products that you make, sell, the services that you have, um, showing that you care about it from a value-based perspective, um, as well as from a profit-based perspective. Absolutely. No, that's great. Thank you. And I mean, gosh, the time has went. So we're on 10.56 on, on my clock at the moment. I can't believe how quick this hour has went. We could literally talk on and on, and on about this subject because it's it's fascinating and it's really interesting. The passion from all of the panellists has been amazing and so appreciated your feedback. So we're moving on to the last couple of questions just before I'm winding up. Um, so I'll go, this might be the last one, actually. So to Michael and Marie, Michael, I'll come to you first. Um, what role do employees, I know you've touched on this, um, what role do employees and team members have to play in achieving sustainability targets? Uh, the, the, the very core of what, what's happening is them that are, they, they're driving the business processes, uh, you know, from the point of view of following the procedures and feeding back and looking at improvements from the point of view of reducing carbon emissions. Uh, but there's even simpler things like so switching off lights when they leave a room, making sure that the taps are they turned off in the toilet. Small things like that make a big difference. But the other thing as well is that you know through education programmes, through the training of the individuals. I mean, for example, we bring in Home Energy Scotland. We did it during lockdown. We still train all the people, and they provide free courses on uh, how you can save energy at home. How you can save water at home, about electric vehicles and all that. Uh, so that makes a big impact on the community as well as the business. Uh, but they're absolutely core to it. Uh, and without them, it ain't going to happen. Absolutely. And that is so true. Again, it's like a thing of collaboration, isn't it? Um, Marie, anything else you'd like to add on that? 
Um, I have a wee list here, <laughs> and uh, basically Michael's just covered the whole list. <laughs> so <laughs> um, we're definitely on the same page. Um, yeah, I think everybody has a role to play in moving towards um, being more sustainable, moving on the journey towards net zero. Um, I think that you know policy making is is important, but I also think that a key a key thing is about education. It's just about talking. It's about you know sharing um things um and and everybody who works within a business and at home um they can just make very small changes as as michael says things like switching switching the lights off thinking about how much water you're you're using things like car sharing and cycling to work and things like you know businesses who I've, I've seen doing things like um having competitions for people who cycle to work it's just it's just small things but it engages the employees and the staff and, and everybody who's involved in the business in thinking really about how to be more mindful about what we're doing um yes. and and all of these wee things help yes absolutely and it's it's almost that cultural shift isn't it that we're experiencing already there's so many there's so much that has already transitioned. It's, um, but yes, that's a cultural shift. And so on to just as our last question, just before we finish up, Ian, we've spoken around this before around the support that's available to businesses. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add? What support is out there for businesses to transition to be in sustainable and to help us to just transition in that table? Yep, sure. So. Uh... Very, very quickly, there, there, there is lots of support out there, and I kind of touched on it. I guess um, from a, a, a Scottish enterprise point of view, we've got some self-help tools. So we've got uh, online guides around sustainability strategy, sustainability-led innovation, and carbon footprinting that are all available on the SE website. We're also developing a, a net zero diagnostic tool to help companies understand where they are on their journey. So it's not about calculating their footprint. It's more about just understanding in terms of management commitment, where their targets should be set, and uh, the opportunities from climate change, um, but we also work with partners. So Zero Waste Scotland, Energy Saving Trust, or Business Energy Scotland, as it is now, um, and and the other enterprise agencies are, are great places to go. Um, and you'll find all that on Find Business Support. And the last one I'd like to just talk about is um, the SME Climate Hub. So that's related to the UN Race to Zero. Loads of really good resources at the SME Climate Hub website, including a carbon calculator tool that goes into Scope One, Two, and Scope Three that companies can use themselves. It, it's an estimation because it uses the cost of um, the scope three components to, to calculate the carbon footprint. So it's not perfect, but it's a really great starting point. So they, that would be my, my, my top tips for support. Fantastic. And that is us one minute over time. Uh, let us see, I cannot believe how quickly this has went. It, it's absolutely flew by. Um, and I just wanted to sort of like highlight a few of the points that have came up and I've underlined as we went on today that have been the, the, the sort of key things for me around becoming a sustainable business. So thinking about cost savings, resilience, PR, marketing opportunities, um, and how the, this is a journey, every little small step counts, I love that. Um, and everybody has a role to play in it as well. And just taking those little first steps, so it's really important to sort of like take these um, take these things and sort of make them happen within your business and reach out to other people and, and collaborate and ask for advice and I'm sure lots of these businesses would be able to would, would be able to help you and would be quite happy to respond and, and help you along in your journey as well because as you've heard today from our panelists there's a lot of passion behind sustainability in business we all really believe in it um, and we're here to help and support whether it's one of the enterprise agencies or whether it's one of the businesses that are already transitioning to sustainable or they are a sustainable business. So all that's left to do is say thank you so very much to our panelists today, Ian Carstairs, Michael Kuzak, and Marie Martin McKinnon. Thank you so much for joining us and for your uh, input, advice, and passion around this topic. Thanks very much for everyone who has attended today, and I hope to see you and speak to you again in the future. Thanks very much and goodbye.